Afternoon, everybody. Getting in our post FOMC recap here today. Didn't do anything in the morning. Simply just watched. We had FOMC in the afternoon, so we waited until then to actually execute. But if we go ahead and take a look on the higher time frame, we actually did get pretty nice delivery this morning. You see that we do end up forming a breaker block. Low, high, lower, low. Right, we end up breaking that here. Also here. This one was the one I wanted to draw your attention to. Because once we close above this swing point, right, if I had to remove kind of the structure now, and we take a look, closing above with the candle body signifies, right, that breaker being confirmed here. So now if we were to pull that up, that last up close candle, notice how this aligns with the daily volume imbalance. So we already have a higher time frame discount. We have now created a new discount in the form of the breaker. This is also the YouTube model. Short term low being cleared here as well as here, right? So we can really see all of these PD arrays taking place. And that's why this becomes such a good area for price to wick into and take off. As we get to a low time frame, we'll be able to see that more clear. But uh, yeah, just a clean little YouTube setup to actually catapult us into our original swing point before retracing into a FOMC and then finally delivering up into that buy side we were looking for here as well as here, right? So two forms of buy side, both on the 15 minute here, as well as here. And we were aiming for those because if you notice, we have unfilled inefficiencies resting right above. So right, as price draws into this liquidity, it also has an inefficiency to return into. Same exact thing here. Right, so as we go back to the chart now, we see how we create perfectly, or I guess we fall short just barely, but this is a false high because we're falling short of that original buy side pool. Right, as well as that inefficiency. So now as we return into it, we're able to go ahead and take that out. Go ahead and work on lower time frames. Right on the five minute, you'll see same fair value gap getting used, really using that daily volume imbalance as well. Right, we get a nice another breaker here. Low, high, low, low, broken. Once we close above, right, we can use that as the breaker here as well. So a lot of formations forming. Right, we can see this one. So a lot of opportunities prior to the expansion to get long. Right, we had the breaker here as well. As we work down to the one minute, we'll now see how price was delivering, right? We continue to deliver and create these breaker blocks. So as we now return into the higher time frame fair value gap, notice that once we leave it, right, we're returning into the fair value gap, we're then leaving it with a new fair value gap here. And at the same time, while we're leaving this higher time frame, 15 minute, notice how we're also getting back above the daily volume imbalance. So we'd like to see that when things overlap like this. And that's why you can trust that now this one minute here will hold, right? Because not only is it the 15 minute, it's also a daily volume imbalance. If we look right, it's also an inversion. So a lot of discounts supporting price as we trade into that area and continue to rip. As we now clear this high, what have we created? Just another breaker, right? So you see how those get created all day. High, low, high, high, right? As we trade back up into the consecutive up close candles, we would expect price to find support. We can see that here right, real nicely. So price just continued to deliver bullishly. Any of these setups that were formed right after running the short term low here end up being respected until we create that initial false high. If we continue to follow price on the one minute, Right, we'll see that we continue to just use discounts, create new ones. Right, so now this fair value gap, once we get above it, we can act, can look for it to act as support. If you actually notice, so I'll pull this one back. As we break through these highs, right, so we break through the highs, close above, we leave a tiny fair value gap here. And if we drag that out, notice how price uses that beautifully. Right, so we create a swing point above it first, we then deliver into that sell side, picking up stops while also delivering into an inefficiency, just like we saw in a higher time frame, but now right on a lower time frame, fractalized here. And we then create the same thing where after finding support at that fair value gap, we expand higher, creating a new fair value gap. And we can expect price to then find support at areas like this. So we tap into it quickly. We accelerate through the high. And from here, we end up creating a false swing point. Right, this is actually one standard deviation from our opening. So if I was to show you, 
right, how we kind of use that. That's what we're running into here first. So that's why we end up hesitating for a little bit before ultimately running through that high. We'll see though that even though we hesitate here, we do get quick short term setups. Right, so after delivering bullish most of the morning, we then create this three drives, one, two, third drive, running out a short term high. Then reversing to take out a low here, leaving behind a fair value gap. And then we use that fair value gap just to return back up into some of these discounts that were left behind on the way up. We don't have to end up taking out all of these lows because the main objective was just to return really into right kind of equilibrium. Like if we were to take that original move formed at 830, running up to the high, notice how we run right back into the midpoint of that range. So this whole move here was simply returning back into the range. You'll see we can use right fair value gaps. So after creating that YouTube model, this is that low risk sell, we sell off, creating new premiums along the way. Right inversion here as well. So these two will end up beautifully. That's why price ends up finding resistance here. Even within this little area, notice we can then continue to refine right short term high being cleared. We break structure here. Leaving behind a fair value gap that gets used. And we just continue to deliver lower and lower. Right up close candles will resist price until ultimately we get right into that midpoint. You see that we continue to really just bounce around that midpoint, the remainder of uh, the afternoon heading into FOMC. So after we created this range in the morning, this high was the ultimate target. Right, because we have higher time frame buy side, and now we have this buy side here. And now you'll see, right, this is where we ended up executing. So we're not interested in FOMC trying to guess and gamble prior to it. You can obviously see we're seeking destroying here, consolidating. We need to see something obvious, an obvious run on stops, and time also plays a big factor, right? So we're waiting until after 2.30. You can see that we end up running out. So let me just take away that consequent encroachment or the midline, excuse me. All right, so our objective is still this buy side. Let's not get that wrong. We create first a false swing running up into this high. We now have relative equal highs. So two relative equal highs underneath a higher time frame buy side pool, we're already looking for price to trade into. So you can see all of this liquidity that we're building here. Prior to that, you see all these lows being formed here, right? We create this initial low during lunch and we don't take it out at all during FOMC. We get close, but we're leaving this low intact because it's gonna be used as counterparty liquidity. So as we run into that, we can pick up the stops and then reverse for the true move. And this is what we were looking for, right? We were looking for a run on that sell side. So we get it quickly here, but now to confirm that price wants to reverse, we need to wait for a market structure shift, right? So this original run lower, we don't get any shift. We then run that low at that point, right? We're really expecting now a market structure shift and that's when we get it. So once we see that we have no hesitation waiting for that fair value gap to form, we go in on that fair value gap, right? We could show quick. We go in on that fair value gap. We then create a volume imbalance and we go in on that volume imbalance as well. So we end up adding there. And as you saw, right, just getting out at that buy side pool, the fair value gap, all of this higher time frame buy side targets that we had ends up getting reached. Once we deliver into that, we wanted to see this buy side here be met, which we ultimately do get up into, right? This is the other 15 minute buy side pool, but all of this in here was just the very high resistance liquidity run. So we ended up going long off of this fair value gap, right? You saw that that position started to work out. We fell just short of our buy side target, reversed to take us out and then finally delivered into it, right? We were able to partial and got stopped in profit. So although we weren't able to partake in the run into our target, That'll happen sometimes and we have to be content with what we're given. We then notice that once we ran this high, we had created a quick little three drives pattern. One, two, three. So we were expecting price to now reverse and heading into the close, try and target this low here, right? If we move this, you'll see that we have equal lows. So our objective became these equal lows, which we didn't get up into where we actually 
made perfectly equal lows here as you can see but even though we didn't get into that we still were able to get short using this right so this is the first fair value gap that gets broken through underneath once we deliver into buy side right so it becomes the inversion you saw us then use that inversion to get short and like i mentioned we were just trying to target this buy side or excuse me this sell side pull here which we do fall short as you saw in the video we shared right we end up kind of taking partials at the low and then getting stopped out this candle here so overall nice afternoon right no losers we like that this trade here was really the bread and butter setup we were looking for so catch everybody off sides thinking we're going lower instead we're just picking up that sell side liquidity we give a clean youtube setup breaker block youtube model right and then we deliver into our buy side from here heading into tomorrow right we have nofp this week so don't want to be too ambitious but we may continue to actually run higher right kind of move some of the drawings so on a one hour sense if we can leave a fair value gap here i'd like to see how that one hour holds up right if we can't this one hour at the lowest is kind of what i would expect to hold up price if we're going to continue to just target buy side right so buy side here next target would be consequent encroachment of this wick and then the high of that wick for upward targets. I say that we kind of want to fizzle out. Let me clear some of this in here. I say that we kind of want to fizzle out. I would look for us to return back underneath now at right, this one hour potential fair value gap and look for lows to start being taken. As of now, though, price looks rather bullish. So we'll see if we can't continue to deliver into uh, higher prices. So that'll wrap it up for today. FOMC notorious for whipsawing. And you really have to understand what you're looking for if you're going to engage in this, right? We were fortunate to be able to catch a nice move. But uh, yeah, we're content with that. We'll have another stream in the morning. So until then, have a good night and we will talk tomorrow. Take care.